prime time local news serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Good evening and thank you for joining us. We a brand new restaurant has opened in Lloydminster with a sweet and spicy menu. Korean breakfast restaurant Toast is now open for business in the border city. After opening on June 29th, Toast is looking to bring a fresh new taste to the local scene. I wanted to do is more uh, authentic, like a Korean style, because I know Lloyd's a uh, small town, like not like Edmonton or a big city. There's not much choice of uh, Asian choices. And then I really wanted to put some uh, Korean taste in it. With a variety of different options, Lim hopes to find success through local taste buds. Well, I need a local support for sure. So if you swing by during the 17th highway and if you would like to try some Korean taste, just come and hop by, swing by. Toast is open Tuesday to Friday from 7 to 3 and on the weekend from 10 to 2. Those interested in giving fishing a try might want to cast a line this weekend as it's the 34th annual Free Fishing Weekend. Saskatchewan residents and visitors are able to fish without having to buy an angling license on any public water open to sport fishing in the province, excluding national parks. The annual event is intended to promote angling in the province and runs from the 9th until the 10th. The Saskatchewan event rides on the last weekend of that National Fishing Week, which is really designed to encourage more people to, to participate in angling and to increase public awareness about the value and diversity of sport fishing opportunities within the province. All angling limits and all other fishing regulations still apply. While you can fish without a license, you'll need one if you plan on taking the fish out of the province. Encourage anyone who plans to go out uh, so that you know rules and are familiar with what the limits might be is to check our website um, saskatchewan.ca slash fishing and our angler guide is online and uh, all that information is contained in the angler's guide. There are close to 70 different species of fish native to Saskatchewan. And now it's time for our first time to check in with Shelby Clark who has a look at our evening weather forecast. Thank you so much, Mr. Jason Mackey. Now taking a first look at your weather forecast here in the border city, sitting at 22. So we are looking at a warmer day today. We're feeling that uh, sunshine throughout the day as well. So we are seeing that peak behind those clouds and we are seeing a much more beautiful day, although we will be expect to see that chance of some precipitation a little bit later on in the evening. Hopefully everybody is still enjoying their day though and having some nice outdoor activities planned right now because we are seeing some uh, quite warm conditions. Switching now over to temperatures across the region for Alberta and Saskatchewan. On the Alberta side, we are looking at warmer temperatures around 21, 22 degrees in most spots on this side. So go a little bit lower. Wainwright is just reaching 20. So we go higher. Lac Labiche is at 19 degrees. And down in Provost, they are the warmest there at 24. Switching now to our Saskatchewan side, they are looking uh, slightly warmer as well, kind of matching with us on the Alberta side. Isle of Cross is definitely looking the warmest with 25. 24 in both Green Lake and down in Macklin, while it's 23 degrees in both Meadow Lake, Pearsland, and as well down in North Battleford. And it is 22 in St. Walberg, matching with us here in the border city, and 20 down in Maidstone. And for North Battleford, from that 23, they will be going down to a low of 15. Kind of like us, they will have that chance of uh, some precipitation continuing on in their evening that will also uh, might have a risk of a thunderstorm. Uh, they will be seeing 15, though, so seeing a warmer temperature for sure that we are looking at for our evening low temperatures as we head more into the summer season. Then tomorrow, they'll be seeing a nice warmer day at 27, so almost reaching 30 degrees, although they will be seeing that uh, a lot more precipitation there tomorrow and seeing that risk of a thunderstorm. So please watch out for that. Make sure you are checking out some Environment Canada just to stay tuned. Cold Lake will be going down to a low of 16, so seeing a nice warm temperature, although seeing that gloomier conditions with some rain as well. Then tomorrow seeing 25, so seeing a nice warmer day with a little bit more sun peeking behind those clouds with a little bit of showers. And for us in the border city, we're going down to 15. And as I was saying, we'll have a risk of a thunderstorm later on in the evening where we'll be seeing around a 60% chance of those showers. Then 25 for our Friday tomorrow to start off our weekend. Although, uh, yeah, look out, we will be seeing that risk of a thunderstorm coming up tomorrow with that warm condition. So just uh, stay tuned and uh, make sure to keep watch. 
And ending off with our three-day forecast now. Starting off that with 25 tomorrow. Saturday, seeing that warm condition with 24 for our weekend. So we will be seeing nice warm conditions. Then Sunday ending off, we'll be looking at 22 degrees with a mix of some sun and clouds. So although we will be seeing that risk of a thunderstorm in those showers, don't worry. We will be seeing a hopefully a beautiful weekend ahead here in the border city. That's all I have for now. We'll have more coming up after the break. Well, the CPCA takes a short pause. That doesn't mean the drivers get a break. Our Thomas Wildman has more. Two of the biggest events in chuck wagon racing are going to be taking place over the next two weeks. And so we have Greg Buchanan here, the voice of the CPCA, talk to us about these two events, the North American Chuck Wagon Racing Championships and the Calgary Stampede Chuck Wagon Races. And so thank you so much once again for being with us today, Greg. Thanks, Thomas, for having me. These two events are very clearly very big, but they don't count for CPCA points. So kind of what is the importance of these events for CPCA drivers and kind of are there any drivers who decide not to compete in these events? I think you got an opportunity to compete at either one of those events. You're going to take advantage of it. It's a, it's all about the money. It's all about the prize money and the glory too. And whether it be the Calgary Stampede or here, the North American Chuck Wagon Championship, you're, you're competing for that cash, but you're also competing against some of the best drivers in the entire sport. So when you get that opportunity, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're shooting a puck or driving a wagon, you want to compete against the best. And that gives an opportunity either here or in Calgary. So let's talk about here with the North American Chuck Wagon Championships. We've got a few CPCA drivers like Jamie Labacan. What are our prospects for some CPCA drivers in the competition coming up this weekend? More than anything, you're going to hear a, a word that we've probably talked about before. It's barn management. Uh, you, you know, sometimes you have a, a three or four or five day show on the CPCA. All of a sudden you have nine days of racing. It changes everything. So you map out your barn, you map out not what night you're going to be hooking your best. And you, most of the guys come in here with two outfits. So you have eight horses that you're trying to manage over those eight days and possibly that ninth day for the championship dash. So that becomes very key important. It is, it is a marathon. It's not a sprint to the finish. It's just a matter of getting around that track every night. This is because it's a North American championship. Are we going to see any exceptional riders coming down from the States to try and take the glory from some of our Canadian drivers? I say American drivers, but WPCA drivers. So, uh, and, and you have one in Ray Crowdell Jr. who's from the Bonneville area. Uh, he's on top of the WPCA standings right now uh, and was in the Pinocchio Stampede Championship Dash, lost out to St. Walbert's Ross Knight. Congratulations, Skinny. Uh, but uh, for Ray Crowdell Jr., he's going to be one of those drivers to look out for. Another guy that's been pretty good is Wayne Solomon. Another guy from the WPCA is uh, Dusty Gorse and Kelly Moore. And, so, and then you, you bring in Chance Flad too. So there, there is a opportunity for a lot of those WPCA drivers to come in here, the NACC, and compete and then to win. And Ray Crowdell Jr. is probably right at the top of that list. Let's change gears over to the Calgary Stampede. There's a few CPCA drivers that are going to be competing. Kind of what are their pro prospects and chances at this prestigious worldwide event? All starts and ends with Todd Baptiste. I don't, you know, I don't want to count the other three drivers out, and that's Dallas Dick, Danny Ringett, and Chris Flanagan. But the last time Todd Baptiste was on a Calgary Stampede track was prior to COVID. And on that track, he was in the championship dash and he finished second to Logan Gore. So that has eaten Todd Baptiste alive since 2019. That's the reason why he's there. He's looking for redemption. Uh, Todd has had a good solid season in the CPCA. He hasn't shut out the lights, but at the same time, he's pacing to get ready for those 10 days of the Calgary Stampede. It begins tomorrow night and look for Todd Baptiste. Uh, we have a very deep barn that he's gonna make it all the way to that at least semifinal Saturday. Of course, we do have some more events in the CPCA coming up. What are the standings looking like right now, Greg? And kind of who is going to try and run away with this? Is it's very tight right now, and who, which drivers are going to look good coming out of this big championship weekdays? No points on the line uh, for either association, the CPC or WPC, over the next two weeks with the Calgary Stampede and the NACC. So I, I think more than anything, I don't know if there's going to be one driver that pulls away because it's so tight right now from one to six to seven. Uh, you know, Logan Gorse is still on top of the standings, but, you know, not that far behind is a Jamie Labicane, a Luke Turnier too, and Luke has won everything there is to win. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, we'll see how tight the standings are when we're back here 
on that Wednesday in August to kick off the new ointments from Nissan CPC final. So it wouldn't surprise me at all that the standings pretty well stay as they are, maybe a little bit juggling back and forth, but it's going to be tight right down on the end. We certainly like to see a tight finish to the CPCA races. And of course, we look forward to the finals that will be here in Lloydminster. Thank you once again for being with us, Greg. And have yourself a great day. Thanks a lot, Thomas. The Lakeland Wrestlers Men's Soccer Clubs are less than eight weeks away from kicking off their upcoming soccer season with training camp taking place next month. Our Adela Ahmed has the details. I'm very pleased to be joined by the men's soccer coach for the Lakeland College wrestlers, Kevin Wagner. Kevin, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with me today. Thanks for uh, reaching out and having, having me on. Certainly. Well, it's obviously been a bit of a busy offseason for your club. Uh, maybe just talk to me about some of the recruits that you have brought in for the upcoming season here. Yeah, we've, on, uh, we've got a, a nice mix of actually recruiting across all the provinces. Um, you know, so we... What we're looking for is is kind of the a player that uh, wants to be involved with the program, um, not just come in for a few months and play some ball and and maybe some school. We're trying to develop programming, um, so I think we've done a nice job at uh, filling the void of having uh, a combination of good people, uh, um, good athlete or athletes, and 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 with goals academically as well. Another thing I also wanted to talk about with you, Kevin, is the the wrestlers uh, soccer and basketball dual camp that's kicking off on July 11th to the 14th. Just talk to me a little bit about what was the purpose behind setting up that dual camp and just, you know, the purpose behind it in general. We've had the dual uh, basketball soccer camp now for four or five years. Um, we did run it through COVID as well. Um, uh, Coach uh, King and myself um, see a lot of, we, we've got a lot of, we're fairly like-minded in a number of different areas. And, and this is a, a camp for young kids there's a lot of similarities um, that between actually basketball and soccer, um, as far as um, some of the principles and it's a great crossover, um, you know, as far as physical literacy. And so we thought it'd be a nice combination. Let's give it a shot a few years ago. And, and uh, you know, it, it went well, um, feedback was good. Uh, kids enjoyed it. And so we've just kept doing it, um, you know, the last number of years. So it's relatively, it's, it's a small camp. Um, but it's an all day camp. Um, if, if a participant's in, um, for the whole day, they can, they'll have supervised lunch so they can basically be dropped off. You know, a parent can drop their, uh, their players off uh, before work and then pick them up, uh, um, you know, at the end of the day at five o'clock. Certainly. Well, obviously you guys had a really good year last year, but you're neck and neck there with Nate, but obviously you didn't get the result that you wanted there in the playoffs. Just tell me a little bit about the expectations that you have as coach for your club for the upcoming season here with the roster that you have assembled so far? Um, just to continue um, to, to, you know, where we had left off. Um, every program is going to have a turnover of players. So we have to make sure that we still have enough of a core, um, which we think we do, um, to show um, depth on the on the pitch, but also leadership off the pitch, on the pitch. Um, and then that our, the recruits that we've brought in um, can get opportunity to play, compete, and either get, starting minutes or and whatnot as far as results um every, every season you know um it, it's simple it how how you end up getting national ranked how you end up winning provincials how you end up doing well in nationals is, is winning games um <clears throat> it's too early to tell if that's going to happen because we've got uh you know 15 rookies um within our program so we've got to teach uh, about a, a couple years of work within five weeks and then um you know give yourself the best chance possible for uh, for opening weekend on, on September 7th or September 6th. Certainly. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time that we do have for this interview. Kevin, I just want to say again, thank you so much for coming on, talking to me about some soccer and best of luck on your team in next season here. Of course, no problem. Thank you. And now it's time to check in once again with Shelby Clark, who has an extended look at our evening weather forecast.
Thank you so much once again there, Jace, taking, yes, an extended look at your weather forecast here. Now we will be looking at our central part here of our uh, uh, provinces with Alberta and Saskatchewan, and there actually is quite a few spots with that severe uh, thunderstorm watch in effect, as well as a warning, especially with Red Deer and Rocky Mountain House. So if you're in those areas uh, as well, Red Deer does have that tornado watch in effect. Please be safe and watch Environment Canada right now just to make sure everything is looking all good. But on the Alberta side, we are seeing some nice warm temperatures. Uh, Edmonton is seeing uh, 22 all over in Jasper. They're seeing the warmest with 24 degrees. Uh, 20 in both Red Deer and White Court, while well, it's 21 there in Rocky Mountain House. Edson is uh, looking just a few degrees cooler there, while Athabasca is the coolest there at 16. Switching now to our Saskatchewan side here, they're looking slightly warmer compared to the Alberta side because uh, they all are seeing past that 20 mark. Here in the border city, we are seeing the coolest compared to the rest, but still quite warm. 22 in most spots with Prince Albert and over in Melfort. 23 in Meadow Lake and North Battleford and Saskatoon and Cold Lake are looking uh, quite warm there at 24. Now going over to our northern zone, holy smokes, you can see they are looking a lot warmer than what we would expect, especially on the Saskatchewan side, seeing closer to that 30 degree mark. Uh, 29, 28 there up in Stony Rapids and Uranium City. So we go a little bit over there to South End and Flim Flon. They are just a degree cooler there with 27 degrees. Uh, 25 in most spots over on this end while Walston Lake is at 23. So Saskatchewan side and North Zone aren't looking too shabby whatsoever. Going over to our Alberta side here, they're looking slightly cooler, especially just in this area here compared to the Saskatchewan side. Slave Lake is looking at 16, while there's 20 and 21 with uh, Grand Prairie and Peace River. The rest definitely are kind of matching now with the Saskatchewan side. Uh, high levels at 25 in Fort McMurray and Fort Chupon are looking the warmest there with 27 and 28. So we are seeing some temperatures definitely closer to 30 degrees in our northern zone for sure. Going over to our southern zone, uh, Medicine Hat is looking definitely the warmest there at uh, just a degree cooler than 30. Uh, 24 degrees in Lethbridge, while it is 23 in both Calgary and Coronation. Over in Banff, they're probably looking the coolest there with 18. And switching back to our Saskatchewan side, uh, they're not looking too bad with their temperatures. Uh, mostly over on the other end there, Esteban and Yorkton looking slightly cooler with 19 degrees. Regina's at 22 and the rest are slightly warmer with 24 and 26. And now going back across the region to seeing what we will expect throughout our evening tonight. Temperature wise, I would say we are going to be pretty happy since we are warming up with those temperatures. Uh, definitely seeing the double digits, but we are warming up, getting closer almost to a low of 20 even uh, with some spots, especially over now Wainwright and Bonneville seeing that low of 16. Most spots will be expecting to see a low of 15 degrees tonight and Myrna will be seeing a low of 14. So uh, temperature wise, we will be a lot warmer, although most spots will be uh, expecting to see a high chance of that precipitation and Provost will be seeing a high uh, risk of a thunderstorm as well as over here in the border city. And ending off with our seven day forecast, as I was saying, we will be seeing that high chance of a risk of a thunderstorm tonight into tomorrow, seeing 25, 24 for our weekend, ending off with 22, a nice warm day. Then get ready, because we will be seeing some nice warm temperatures without rain next week, 27 Tuesday and 30 even next Wednesday. So we got that summer season coming in here in the border city. That's all I have for now. RJ Smack will have more news coming up after the break. For joining us today for Primetime Local News is Sierra Bennett with Startup Lloyd Minster. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today, Sierra. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Of course, happy to be able to have you on here. Now, Startup Lloyd Minster will be hosting a summer-themed pop-up retail event. Now, this seems pretty interesting. I've been seeing a lot of posts about this on Facebook and whatnot. So what exactly is this event all about? So our pop-up retail event, you can almost think of it like a little mini market. And so what we try and do is get um, a few local uh, business owners in here as vendors. And um, we just get the get the word out there for them, help them kind of get their name out there. And because Startup is all about growing local businesses, helping out entrepreneurs. We're a nonprofit that helps out um, entrepreneurs in Lloydminster. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of giving business owners and entrepreneurs um, the opportunity to test out a retail presence for their business without the commitment of a permanent storefront. And then it also allows them to get into our space and explore um, all the services and resources that Startup provides. Now for this summer themed event, is this an annual event that Startup Lloydminster has each year or is this kind of the first one? Well, we have had, a, uh, I think three, we've had three pop-up retails um, 
in the past couple months and they've actually done very well. And so now we have two more planned for the summer. We have um, this one coming on Saturday and then we also have another one on August 6th. For people wanting to find some more information on it, is there a place online that they can look for this Saturday? Um, you can always look at our social medias. Those are always very up to date. Our Facebook and Instagram, especially uh, just Startup Lloyd. And then we also have a website, startuploid.com. And under upcoming events, there's our calendar. And then if you just click on pop-up retail on the calendar, it gives you all the information right there. And how would you say that support has been so far for the upcoming event coming up this Saturday of seeing the response and, you know, for previous pop-up events that Startup Lloyd Minster has been having that you were saying? Yeah, we've uh, we've been seeing quite a few people come in every single time. Um, it, again, it is summer, so people are busy and stuff. But um, yeah, we've actually had some pretty good turnouts in the past. So hoping for another one. With having a few of these so far, why would you say it is important for Startup Lloyd Minster to have this for local businesses here in the community? Well, um, startup is all about supporting the little guys, right? Helping people grow their business. And there's lots of hidden gems out there that people don't really know about. So places and markets and pop-up retail all that kind of stuff. It really just gives people the opportunity to get themselves out there with their business and spread the word, get their name out there. It, it helps out a lot. And for people coming to check this out on Saturday, can you say what they can all kind of expect at this uh, pop-up event? Yeah, so um, pop-up retail, it's located at our office, located right behind Panago Pizza and Pet Pad. Um, and typically we have a few tables set up in our office space, in our collision space. Um, and then, yeah, just, it's honestly just almost like a farmer's market or a trade show, just a smaller version of it. And uh, yeah, all the vendors are all set up with their products or their services. And yeah, you just get to come in, browse around and shop. And along with the support, how have you been seeing for the vendors so far? Have you been seeing a good response and lots of strong support from how many vendors you get for each of these events? And for people that are kind of interested in becoming a vendor, how can they register? Yeah, we have a few. We have, I believe, three at the moment, but there's still time to register if anyone's wanting to. Um, they can register through our website. Um, just at uh, there, There's a tab on our website on startuploid.com where it's the registration form. And then, um, or they could just give me an email. Just shoot me an email, Sierra at startuploid.com. Is there any more you want to add on for these events that I may have missed out on? You want to let people know about? Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think one thing that's important to say is the pop-up retails are always on Saturdays from 11 to 3. So it doesn't matter what, what like date it is. It's always going to be on a Saturday. Um, it's always at our office. And yeah, just come by if you have the time. Perfect. Well, I'm glad we were able to speak about this, Sierra. I'm glad we're helping uh, get the word out. And thank you so much again for joining us today. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloyd Minster. Thank you so much for joining our program today, Michael Hinkson. I'm so excited to introduce you to talk to you about your book, Running with Roselle. So what inspired you to write this story? I, in 2001, on September 11th, was the Mid-Atlantic Region Sales Manager for Quantum Corporation, which is a Fortune 500 company that manufactured products that would allow people to back up their data over a network. And that was especially important in the New York area where every Wall Street firm was required by the Security and Exchange Commission to keep all of their data for at least seven years and to keep it off site. So we made the products to do that. Anyway, we were gonna be training some people as to how to sell our products. And I and my guide dog, Roselle, were in our office, which was on the 78th floor of Tower One of the World Trade Center on that day. The terrorists attacked and we escaped and became pretty visible because the media learned about my story. And um, so I then began to travel and speak and talk about what happened, why it happened, lessons that we should learn from September 11th, talk about teamwork and trust and the human animal bond. Roselle was my fifth guide dog. And in 2002, it was suggested that I should write a book about our, our story and, and our history. And the first book we wrote was published 
by Thomas Nelson Publishing, which is now part of HarperCollins. That book was published in 2011. It was called Thunderdog, the story of a blind man, his guide dog, and the triumph of trust. I really thought about with my colleague who helped me write that book, Susie Flory, what we should do maybe to introduce Roselle to kids, to children, to youth. And so two years later, working with another writer who was more expert in writing children's book, we decided to write Running with Roselle. And the story was not really so much about the World Trade Center, but rather it was a little bit more about our lives growing up. Me as a blind youth growing up, Roselle, when she was born at Guide Dogs for the Blind and been learning uh, how, to, how to be a guide dog, first by living in a family's home for a year and then coming back and doing the advanced work of learning to be a guide dog. So the book was really very much about those things. And then, of course, we did put some parts of it in about the World Trade Center. But it was mainly more about me and Roselle growing up, trying to educate youth about what guide dogs really are and what they're not, and that blind people are more than people think that we are. That is, people think that if you're blind, you really can't do anything. I've been told that so many times. Um, people think that the guide dog is the is the way that the blind person gets around because the dog knows everything and the blind person just holds onto the harness and the dog leaves them there. That is so totally incorrect um, because the dog's job is only to make sure that we walk safe. It's still my job to know where to go and how to get there. Roselle and I formed our team in November of 1999 when I went to Guide Dogs for the Blind and, and received her and we bonded and found that we could work together and everything kind of went from there. So that's really where the, the book came from. What do you want readers to take away from the book? Blind people are as normal as sighted people, that blind people can do the same things that sighted people can. It's just that we may use different tools to accomplish the same tasks that people who can see perform. I use a guide dog to make sure that I walk safely. Sometimes I use a white cane, but I use these tools to navigate, to walk around. I still need to be the one to know where I want to go and how to get there. How do I do that? Well, how do you do that as a sighted person? There's a lot of ways that we get information. And so I, um, I have skills that have taught me about being self-aware and being aware of my surroundings. And I use tools that give me the information I need to know when I'm walking down the street where I am and so on, a lot of listening. I also use a, a GPS system that talks or an iPhone with apps on it that give me the information that you get from an iPhone with apps on it or from an Android phone. The dog's job is to make sure that we walk safely and don't fall off curbs and don't bump into things and so on. The dog expects my commands and the dog is only confident when it's getting my commands given in a confident voice. And so I want people to understand that we're just using different tools to do the same things that they do. And the tools that we use are just as good as our, and are just as equal and allow us to have the same equal life that other people do. Blind people have the same right to live in the world as sighted people. And we shouldn't be viewed as less simply because we don't see. Because in reality, Every sighted person has the disability that you require light to get around and do things. When the light bulb was invented, it was invented so that you could get around in the dark. Your disability is just as significant or not as, as my blindness happens to be. We all have gifts and we shouldn't be viewed as less just because our gifts are used in a different way, perhaps, than others are used. Thank you so much again for talking with me about this very important subject. My pleasure. We're glad to, to help. And if people want to buy either of the books, they are available wherever books are sold. Ending off, we'll take another quick look at your seven-day forecast. We will be seeing that risk of a thunderstorm uh, throughout the evening uh, tonight and be seeing that through the day tomorrow. So just be prepared. Saturday, we'll see a warm day as well with 24, 22 on Sunday. So seeing uh, nice temperatures for the weekend. Then next week, we will be seeing that warm streak continue on. We'll be seeing 23 Monday. We won't be seeing as much precipitation as well. So a nice little break from those wet conditions. And then even reaching 30 degrees with 27 next Tuesday and 30 next Wednesday. So get ready because we're going to be seeing a beautiful week coming up. 
Awesome, thanks for that, Shelby. Love to see those warm temperatures finally coming here to the Border City. That's all the time we have for our first hour of primetime local news. Our second hour continues next.